So the Book of Acts gives us the model for reaching the ends of the earth. So I'm in Burma right now. The island of Bali is absolutely spectacular. We are in Cambodia here. This is a beautiful family that lives in a village that we've done distributions with. In the Great Commission, let's remember, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And for us at World Mission, it's really important that the Word of God be a part of that. I mean, how can you really become a disciple if you don't have access to the Word of God? We are in Kor, the middle of Rendili land, and all these brothers are Rendili pastors. So are you guys happy about these units? Yes. yes. All right. Cambodia is a, an amazing country. It's surrounded by Laos, Vietnam, and Thailand. And the 16 million people that live here, they say about 85% are Buddhists, and many of them have never heard the gospel for the first time. Hello and welcome. It is the World Mission Update. I'm Rusty Humphreys. That guy there in the wacky shirt is Greg Kelly, CEO of World Mission, and this is the World Mission Update. Um, dude, the shirt. What is what is that all about? Yeah, I can't really say Hawaiian style, Rusty. No. Although it's the closest thing I got to that. Uh, this is actually has. I don't even know what language. I've traveled uh, all over Asia. It's clearly an Asian language, but. Uh, undistinguishable so far. And I've been in China. I've been, um, where else have I been? Indonesia. I've been in different places where it's possible. It's probably Cantonese or Mandarin. Nobody knows what it says. So I feel, I feel safe with it, but it's, it's definitely a language on there. And we're going to talk about languages today. So I thought it was very appropriate for today's world mission update. How do you not know what language do you know, even know where you bought it? You know what? You know, we've got all these thrift stores at World Mission that support us. So it's it's very it's so long ago that I got it. It's possible it came from a, from a thrift store. I think someone just got it and said this would be great for Greg and they gave it to me. And, and maybe think, they, they just made up the language. It's not even a real language. Just some guy painted it on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a real language. One of my staff members had there's an app where you can put it on top of a language and it will start to discern, you know, what it says. Yeah. Uh, they did that, and it every time they turned the angle on it, it had a different message on them. So I, I don't think it was tracking too good, but all of the, any of the languages were safe. It's like he loves the mountains. Johnny is a good boy. Uh, I eat peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, let's for- get lunch at McDonald's, oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome all right well um you've got a couple things in your mind today what's uh what's going on in your world and in the world of world mission yeah well i mean i was thinking today rusty about this whole language thing i think you can't get away from global news and all these things going on and you know i just started thinking about missions and, and how important it is as us as followers of jesus to understand really the essence of what christ was saying when he said go make disciples of all nations he wasn't talking about countries, and so many times, and we talk about this on the World Mission Update, that country-oriented missions, we've got to stop doing. We need to start looking at the harvest field from a standpoint of language and people groups. And so, just as an example, out of the 195 countries, you have over 17,000 people groups. Um, and so, today, you know, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about the languages of the world. I'm thinking about uh, and there's about 7,000 languages. So the, the main difference, Rusty, between a people group and a language, uh, because you could have uh, a one language but multiple people groups in it. So an example of that would be Arabic. So just in the country of Egypt alone, there's many different people groups, like over 20 that are distinct people groups that all speak Arabic. Huh. And so the fact that the, the fact that I speak the same language doesn't mean that I'm the same people group because there's barriers. It might be I might be from Libya. That might be where my origin is from. You know, 100, 200 years ago, my ancestors came from Libya. Right. They speak Arabic. Very different than someone who came from maybe a higher caste uh, in the country of Egypt who speaks Arabic as well. So it's important that we understand these things, because if I'm coming in uh, to a place with the same approach, the same um, sort of uh, dialect of a language, I might totally miss my mark uh, with good intentions. And of course, that's why we uh, we distribute the, the audio Bible, because it brings a heart language right to the people's lives. And it's one of the reasons why we do the World Mission Update, because it's really almost impossible to put yourself in an American mindset 
and try to put yourself in uh, the mindset that these partners have to deal with when trying to reach people uh, with the word of Jesus? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the the, the gaps, Rusty, that we'll have are, are in massive in, in many instances. And understanding the culture is critical, but that that's really the heart of God. Some Someone asked me one time, hey, wouldn't it have been easier if God just created everybody and said, okay, you all speak Arabic, you all speak Mandarin, you all speak you know English, whatever, and it's just one way. And really, the objective of our life, this one life that all of us have to spend— and that's that's what it comes down to. We all have one life to spend is to glorify God. And how boring of it is God if God created everything that we see. He created everything and he says, "Yeah, my people are going to worship me in one language." I mean, that's kind of lame. That's pretty boring. So the diversity right. of cultures and all the different expressions of worship. Listen to this verse in Revelation 7, 9, it's, and this is John. So John is given a vision of heaven, and this is what he says as he's looking. So he's seeing heaven, all right? And he says, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. That is what John says. is in, That's what will meet us in heaven. And quite honestly, Rusty, when we even look at the things going on in the world today, and all of the chaos and all of the, um, you know, the wars and rumors of wars and all this hatred and people group against people group, they're all sort of signs, right? They're, they're sort of birth pains is what the Bible would refer to them of the coming of Christ. The biggest thing that hasn't taken place yet um, that's required for the fulfillment of Christ's return is every nation or tribe will have a witness of the gospel. And that has not happened yet. Are we getting close to that? We're getting close to that as as World Mission continues to carry out our mission, which is to go into these tribes and people groups. Rusty, you and I met uh, with a people group that's over 120 million people, and it's 0.00% Christian. Right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work to be done. And so as the church gets more aware of that and 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 resources some of these things from their prayers, from even them going to some of these places, to helping an organization like World Mission. Now we start moving closer, but we're just, there's not enough of us who understand this and are doing enough about it. Okay. Um, we have some pictures of some people. Where, what country are we going to with these pictures? I think we're going to start in Congo because this is a beautiful uh, indication of the people groups listening. So this this people group is called the Pygmies, but the language is called Lingala. And so what you have here is a, a group, I believe that's a picture we're looking at. Well, well, here, here's a picture we're going to put up here. is a number of uh, men with some babies that are kind of all in a circle here. And it's an African, African oh, guy. That right? is an African group, yes. Is that so the wrong one? So don't go to that one. No, we're good. We're okay. good. That's what we want to look at. So in Africa, uh, we're with the Pygmies there. And uh, you can see their their kind of hut in the background, uh, and this is a this is a gathering of of individuals that would be they're they're gathering around this, basically. So this is our our obviously our treasure, our solar powered audio Bible, because none of the people, including the adults in that photo, are literate. They're all oral learners, so they prefer to learn in a non literate way. And when the treasure gets turned on, it starts playing Lingala. And so they start listening to the words of Jesus. They start learning about Christ. Uh, there's different messages on there. There's music on there. A lot of these cultures, music is huge, Rusty. So we put a lot of music on there because it gathers them together and they enjoy that. And they'll be dancing and clapping and then uh, learning about Christ. So that's what's going on in that photo. All right. Let's take a look at another one here, Greg. Uh, put up uh, this little family with... Uh, uh, she got a baby on her lap and a little boy smiling and a like a red bag of something. Yeah, I love this one because this is really there's a lot of things going on here. Um, our focus in Indonesia, uh, and as we spoke today about the different people groups here, here we've got one country, the most populated Muslim country in the world, Indonesia, which is where this photo is from and this outreach. Seven hundred and ninety different nations or people groups inside of that one country. And of wow. course, they've been, they've been affected um, as, as we've, we've spoken about the, the poorest of the poor and the, the places of 
the unreached parts of the world have been disproportionately affected by the coronavirus and COVID. And so there was, they are one of the eight active emergency food uh, relief programs that we're doing. So that those are some grateful people right there, Rusty, who have received uh, food from World Mission during the uh, the COVID sort of crisis. Awesome. All right, here's somebody that doesn't look very healthy. Uh, this guy's kind of laying on a bed and doesn't look real yeah, healthy. This, this is this guy's handicapped. So you know what's what's so unfortunate in a lot of these cultures is the handicapped are almost discarded. I mean, in instances, they're treated worse than animals. Families disown them. They're they're a nuisance in their mind, and they just don't have the opportunity. I mean, in the U.S., there's a lot of facilities, a lot of care facilities that will care for people that are handicapped in, in some way, whether uh, you know emotionally or physically. And this guy uh, is definitely handicapped. And so there's not many people loving and caring for him. When the church comes alongside in these situations, Rusty, it's a beautiful expression of hands and feet of Jesus coming in to the real life uh, crisis of an individual. And that, that would be the only food that he would have gotten that entire week. Wow. And so it's loving this guy. Oh, okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, little boy again, smiling. He's uh, handing a bag to his mama. It looks like yeah, it's more outreach going on when our, when our partners do these kind of things, Rusty, the stories we get back and we believe very strongly in this, you and I aren't there doing it. And so, for us, all of these touch points, all of these distributions, all of these acts of love and, and expressions of, hey, I care about you, are all done. The common denominator is the local church. So the, one of the stories that we got was uh, from this uh, village chief, which which is the key. I mean, when you go into these places, you don't just sort of show up at someone's home and go, hey, who has need? You have to get the yeah. blessing from the chief in, in this situation. And this this guy, he said he was so, so thankful that they came in. He the, the village chief, again, a Muslim guy, he says the Christians have demonstrated a great witness. And so when when you hear words like that coming from people who, you know, just months ago were sort of targeting you for persecution, right? man, what an opportunity to uh, be an example. And so are they seeing... Um, the, the, the Christians are a great witness. That's awesome. Are they more welcoming now than they have been in the past because of that? Exactly. That's exactly what happens. So, um, you know, it's unfortunately that it takes a crisis sometimes to sort of, you know, make people, but if you're think about this in our own lives, when everything is comfortable and everything's going well, I have no reason to sort of evaluate my worldview. Everything's fine. What, I mean, what is my need? Uh, and that's one of the great challenges in the West is we're so self-sufficient. It's like, yeah, why do I need God? I'm, I'm, I've got this, you know, I'm under control. I don't have any needs. And in these places, um, one sort of season of bad crops, bad harvest, my cow dies. I mean, everything is thrown into turmoil. You've yeah. lost entire source of income. So now when the, the church can step into that space and, uh, you know, share food and just in very tangible ways, it, it it causes their attention to look in that direction and go, no one else is loving me like these guys. Now tell me about your message. Right. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. All right. So you've got a video here. What is it we're about to look at? Well, this again is from Indonesia. And we got this, Rusty, we get some of these stories in that are so precious. Uh, it's, it's a very spontaneous um, capturing of a testimony. And what we're going to see here is, is three young boys who really saw a need themselves. Their, their parents are Christians, and they said, we, we want to do something, Mom and Dad. We, we want to be part of the solution here. So this, this uh, short little video sort of captures what three young boys did in Indonesia. Hello. Today, I really feel in joy because we celebrate the Ascension Day of Jesus. We know that when Jesus go to heaven, he promised us, he gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit inside us give us the ability to do what Jesus do even greater than what Jesus do. That's the book of John says. And if you remember in the Bible, there is a time when Jesus met 5,000 people that hungry and Jesus want to feed them. But the disciples says, send them back to their hometown because we have nothing to feed them. But Jesus say, we have to feed them. And you know how Jesus feed them? Jesus find there is a little boy with five 
bread uh, with five loaves and uh, uh, two fish, and with that uh, food from the children, he can feed five thousand people. And today, I will show you how the little children also become a blessing to the people who get affected by the pandemic of the COVID nineteen. You see, this one, they, this is a three little boy. They've been saving their pocket money for one year and since this is the pandemic time they cannot go uh, because this is the lockdown time they cannot go to anywhere so they told me to use their pocket money that they saved for one year to feed people that are uh, affected by the COVID-19 so yesterday I collect their saving and buy some uh, food stuff here like rice, noodle, uh, cooking oil, uh, and sardine and we will distribute to 20 family that affected by the COVID-19. If 2000 years ago Jesus can use a little boy to feed 5000 people, at least now 3 boys can feed 20 family. I hope this passage can bless you and encourage you to do more for God's kingdom. God bless you. Wow, that that is so touching. I mean, these. I mean, how, those kids didn't have anything. They didn't have anything, and no one told them to do it. Wow. I mean, they they were just following the model of their parents who have been going house to house, village to village, sacrificing everything. And we we help them as much as we can, Rusty. Uh, but they're the ones doing the heavy lifting. I've got the easy part. Hmm. You know, I get to tell people about the opportunity to have an impact and people, you know, send us some resources and are praying for us. And then we send, you know, the, the resources to them. They, they go buy it and then they go door to door. And these young boys watched what mom and dad did, sacrificial love, and they said, we want to do something as well. Right. And here they go, and they, you know, digging and scraping every coin they have and feeding 30 families. I mean, that's inspiring to me. I mean, that goes right to, you know, the widow's might story from the that's Bible, exactly. right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah. You know, and speaking of resources and being difficult times, one of the great resources that World Mission has are your thrift stores around Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm guessing those aren't open or haven't been for a while. Are they open yes. yet? It's been tricky. Just this past week, we were able to finally open up. Michigan was a little slow on the uh, the opening uh, side of things uh, as far as uh, comparatively to the country. But uh, we have finally opened up, and now we're, we're trying to get those going. But, yeah, that was a pretty big hit for us Yeah, because uh, those, those are a, a significant part of our support, helping us do the things that we share on the World Mission Update. But God's been faithful. And, uh, you know, we're, we're able to press on and continue. I mean, all these photos, the last few weeks, Rusty, uh, the things that we've been sharing and the testimonies we've shared have all happened in the midst, the middle of COVID, which is a great testament to, uh, you know, God's faithfulness. That's incredible. And, you know, they really are doing great work at World Mission. I, I don't work at World Mission. I'm a talk show host. <laughs> I help them do their podcast. But I've been there. I've seen what they do. I've seen the how they use the resources. They're not in some Taj Mahal. It's not some crazy expensive, everybody driving Beamers and Mercedes cars. Oh, we got cool shirts here, though. <laughs> they, do, they do have cool <laughs> shirts. Um, if you've ever wondered how you can make a difference, this is, what, this is it. You want to talk about helping the poorest of the poor, the people who, they've never heard the name Jesus before. Can you imagine? Never heard the name. And so if you have been looking for a way to make a difference, to touch someone's heart, to make a change in the world, this is it. Greg, how can people help you? Well, our website is worldmission.cc, and they can go there. They can learn more about us. They can give securely online. Um, we have the highest certification of accountability oversight, um, and you know that's a great way to support us. And also what we're doing here, Rusty, on the World Mission Update, every week we come to you and we're trying to share your stories. We try to deposit something in you. Rusty and I aren't just here just to, you know, with our hands out saying, help us, help us. Yeah, we want to give you that opportunity as well, but we want to inspire you 
When we get together, our objective is to seed something inside of your life to make hopefully uh, you know and something that that gives you something to chew on and to ask yourself, how can I look more like Christ? And I ask myself the same question every day. But we want to deposit and invest in you. Please share the World Mission Update with your friends and your family, and visit us, of course, uh, every week. But if you go to our website, worldmission.cc, just like those three young boys, uh, they didn't they didn't go to our website, but they just said, what do I have? And friends, all of us have something. All of us have something. Uh, and it's just a blessing. And we appreciate uh, you participating. Amen. Amen, brother. All right. Do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor. Please go to worldmission.cc. Worldmission.cc. Help support this podcast. Help support the great works that Greg is doing with World Mission, getting those treasures out, helping the poorest of the poor. And they can't do it without your love and support. So please go to World mission.cc we really appreciate you we'll catch you next time share subscribe like let people know about this podcast i'm rusty Humphreys. he's greg kelly thanks for watching this is the world mission update